Hello there and welcome to Bathcast, a podcast created by the young curators of Mosley Road Baths and funded by the National Lottery Heritage Fund. I'm Rachel Baker, your host and lover of baths. Bathcast is a unique podcast where I'm interviewing people whilst they're in a slipper bath. Each guest is linked to Mosley Road Baths in a different way. So grab a rubber ducky and a bar of soap and you too can relax and listen whilst you're in the bath. This isn't just a podcast, it also contains a poem, a song, and a guided meditation. You might as well call this a sandwich, because boy oh boy is it jam-packed. Anyway, here is your guided meditation. Hi, I'm Ajay Sun, and in today's guided meditation, you can close your eyes gently, or if it feels more accessible to you, you can keep the eyes open and lower the gaze. So in this guided meditation, we'll give you some invitations that you can repeat after me, or if you'd prefer, you can just enjoy the rising and the falling of the breath. Breathing in, I see myself as the rain. Breathing out, I see myself as the flower. In, rain. Out, flower. You can continue to practice in this way Or you can continue to notice the rising and the falling of the breath. Witnessing where maybe there is some tension in the body. Witnessing maybe what arises Breathing in, I see myself as the rain. Breathing out, I see myself as a flower. That was a wonderful, soothing meditation. But now on to our interview. Our first interview is with Adam Wynn, a lifeguard at Mostly Road Baths, whose artistic practice of collaging is very separate from his lifeguarding, but his commitment to reusing materials and running workshops linked to the core values and sustainability of Mostly Road Baths. I hope you enjoy it. Hello there, Adam. Welcome to Bath Cast. How are you doing? Yeah, good, you? thank you. You're in the bath. I'm in. It's nice, isn't it? They've really done this one up lovely. It's got some plants on the wall. There's a nice mirror. It looks very posh. Just just setting the scene for the listeners. Um, anyway, we've only actually met once before. I bought some art off of you on Facebook Marketplace. Completely so, random. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I know. And then to now for the second meeting to be, you're in a bath and I'm sat outside the bath. It's really, it's really nice. Is the temperature okay of the water? Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Okay, yeah. great. You're welcome to put a bit more in if you need it. And also, do you eat in the bath? No. 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 Okay. Do, do people eat in the bath? Well, I did have a Subway melt in the bath <laughs> when I last had a bath. So yeah, I went to Subway and then I thought... I have that in the bath actually, and it was so overrated because it just like crumbs falling onto you. Yeah, Wash your I, bath. Can't, yeah. I can't imagine anything worse. No, I would say I don't wouldn't do um, it to be honest. Um, I've heard of people having beers in the bath. Yes, that does happen. I've never done yeah. that. Yeah, I actually think liquid in the bath can be quite difficult, even if you're having a tea, because you have to rest it on your tummy, <laughs> and then that's quite hot. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, so it's a bit of a difficult one. But I suppose a beer in the bath would be quite nice, or like another pop, fizzy pop in the bath. Yeah. I could give it a go. Yeah, and when you're a kid, it's nice to have bath toys. I feel like we should have that more. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think I should have been more demanding with my uh, request to do the podcast. Yes, you're right. I should have had at least one battleship. Yeah, yeah. Uh, would one be nice. duck. Yeah, I know we should have really padded it out a bit more, but I'm sorry about that. But anyway, do you want to tell me what, what is your role at Motor Duo Bart? What, what do you do? <laughs> yeah, so I'm the pool operations coordinator. <laughs> I, I work here part time, it's, it's only 15 hours a week, um, but I, I deliver lifeguard training to the staff. Um, right. if, if you're a lifeguard, you have to do two hours of, of training each month to keep oh, up to date. Okay. So I'll deliver that training. Mm-hmm. I've run a couple of lifeguard courses. But then day to day, it's um, making sure safety checks mm-hmm. are done. Okay. People are trained. So if we have new members of staff, mm-hmm. I induct them to the centre right, right. and show them what's mm-hmm. what. Rotors, timetables, mm-hmm. taking bookings. Okay. Yeah, it's all, all, the, all admin, really. So when you're training someone, you say to, you get people get two hours of training a month. But mm-hmm. do you do you need to go on a course before you even get to that stage? How long does it take to become a lifeguard? In one way or another, you need to do thirty six hours training. Right. Okay. Before you're even yeah. Before you're mm-hmm. eligible, and then you have mm-hmm. to do a test. So oh, there's okay. a, a multiple choice. There's a, a practical mm-hmm. test in the water. Okay. Uh, and a practical test on land, so mm-hmm. CPR and things. Typically, people will do a course over one week. Right, right. And then do the test and then, and then be eligible to work and wow. train elsewhere. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, the, the qualification only lasts for two years. Oh, okay. So to be eligible to renew the qualification, you have to have done 20 hours ongoing training within that period of time. And then most people keep up to date by doing yeah. training each month. Mm. And, yeah, people just mm. carry on being yeah. lifeguards. How, how many cannonballs do you think you get in a week? <laughs> Uh, across the UK or me personally? Oh, just you personally, yeah, yeah. But you could um, do across the UK as well. I think people would love the statistics. Yeah, I would know. Not many here. No. No, pe- people are quite good mm. here. Um, when we have regular swimmers. Yeah. So everybody already, pretty much everybody that comes in mm. on any day, whether mm. it's a weekday, weekend, depending on the session, mm-hmm. they're usually the same faces. I see, so yes, you know. see a lot of people, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if I saw one, in mm-hmm. a week, that would be a, a rarity. And that's something you'd have to, you know, you'd write that down because it's such a rarity, would you? Um, no. I wouldn't write it down. No. I don't know who that would be for. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Who would that be for? My records, my cannonball yeah, records. Yeah, exactly. Well, you could start doing that. It'd be quite nice to kind of create a bit of a tally, I think. I think it'd be nice to get statistics on, on those sort of things. What got you into lifeguarding? Do you, did you love swimming? As a kid, mm-hmm. I'd go with my granddad regularly I, I can't put a number on how many times a week we would go couple mm-hmm. and then didn't really swim after about year eight maybe and then when i was 19 i was working in a in a nightclub oh yeah and uh it was the pre pre everything mm-hmm. um and it was the days we had to pay for uh, cash with a taxi I couldn't really book one and it was the, like double fare mm-hmm. and i was working on new year's eve and i just had for some glitch mm-hmm. i hadn't been paid Oh, from the right. nightclub and I, I text them saying um, it's going to be double fares can you pay me in advance or can you sort me out with any cash when I come on to shift no reply so I just never went back to that job oh, that, so that would have been the 1st of January no job and then yeah my granddad said uh, they, they need lifeguards at Stetchford right. um, why don't you do the course so I went and I went and like a, the pre-test mm-hmm. touch the bottom and two lengths in a minute and things and yeah, I did the course and I've been a lifeguard for, I was trying to work it out, 17 years. Oh really? Probably. Great. Yeah. Oh, I love it. And what a way to begin a year. I love yeah, that. Not really bad. empowering in a way. So for anyone listening who wants to do lifeguarding, how would you go about that now? Is there courses at Mosley Road Baths? There... there won't be another yeah. one here in 2023. Okay. They run regularly across the UK. Mm-hmm. You can type in find a lifeguard course. Mm-hmm. And then on the, the Royal Life Saving Society website, they'll just you, you can narrow it down by distance mm. to your postcode or however you want to do it, and you, you can find courses. But they, they typically run within school holidays. Mm-hmm. You're best to kind of keep a mind or keep an eye out for like half terms, okay, uh, great. Easter breaks, things like that. Right, well, if anyone listening, that's, that's how you do it. And it's so important that, uh, obviously, we have lifeguards, because here's a bit of a a fact for those listening, in that before public baths were around, so places like Mosley Road Baths, there was a big spike in drowning, because people would, like, they'd have baths in ponds or 
bodies of water, but they didn't know how to swim or have any, you know, they were ignorant to water safety. So in 1845, there were 33 deaths alone in Manchester. Hmm. And that is a fact that you now know. I do. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? It's a good one. Yeah. That was a record scratch because we're going to take a quick pause here to listen to a poem by Erin Gilby. Will patrons kindly refrain from... A cleaner curses and scrapes the grime of a thousand trades from slipper bath tiles, glasses fogged with residual steam. Tomorrow's fresh bath water will be clear only while it's running. The lifeguard shuffles in his chair. A boy in ill-fitting uniform, foggy-eyed, arm newly missing, rests his back on dry bath tiles, listens for footsteps, a schoolboy habit, before fumbling with a cigarette he pretends to enjoy smoking. The lifeguard doesn't see, it's too far back. Tug of war across the pool, the beaded rope dragging waves into thick, glossy water. One pair of hands jolts back, the second lifeguard tumbles in. I was across the pool, how could I have been pushing? He returns to his seat, still grinning. Later from his throne, his artist eyes imagine together swimsuit patterns, purple rinse hair, shark fin caps into a bright collage, shifting in the glare of a crash. Someone falls from shoulders, resurfacing sheepish after failed acrobatics. This time, the lifeguard wags a finger. Their bodies move with less authority. Teenage feet tap over the covered pool. Sweaty hands close the dizzying space between the two of them, ears roaring. Behind, muttering chaperones discuss whether a hand on a waist constitutes petting. The lifeguard doesn't think so. He loves to dance. His granddad never imagined this during Wednesday afternoon, breaststroke, then ice cream. He hoped he'd be a pool lifeguard, yellow and red, whistle round neck. But at the end of the world, drowning prevention is boats on high streets, breathless heads, ducking. Blinking away this future, the lifeguard returns to watching regulars adjust their goggles and make their daily decision. Fast, medium or slow. Tickled by ambition, Jean pads towards fast but swivels back to medium on hearing her name from a friend shouting. He's disappointed she didn't try the fast lane this week. Across the pool, throughout time, a goose-pimpled child stands, toes curled over the concrete edge, heart in chlorinated mouth and decides to jump. In midair, they curl into a tight ball and land with a delicious splash. The lifeguard brings the whistle to his lips. He draws the line at bombing. Now, back to the interview. Do you know when lifeguarding first became, like, something something you needed a lifeguard in? But was there always lifeguards in baths? Uh, I can't remember the year of the book. Somebody not that long ago gave me one of the first editions of a lifeguard manual. Oh, right. It's like a tiny, Mm. not even A5, and somehow people learn how to be lifeguards through these tiny printed manuals. Not that they would have had PowerPoints and videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, so mostly road bath. What what led you to mostly road bath from? Would you say Stretford? Stretford. 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 Yes, that was when I started Mm. out. So I have kind of worked everywhere. Right. Okay. Mm. Is is a short way of explaining it. So even though I've been a lifeguard for seventeen years, there weren't very many opportunities for me to be a contracted full time member of staff. So Mm. I, for a long time probably until I was about 26, mm-hmm. I would just dart around the, 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 the city. So maybe I'd do some lifeguarding at, at Small Heath, and then I'd work on reception at Billsley, which is yeah. a tennis centre. Um, and then I, I used to come here every now and again and mm-hmm. do a bit of lifeguarding. So uh, uh, throughout the years, I've worked pretty much everywhere in, in Birmingham, at least, except the King's Standing. Okay. I don't know if it just happens to yeah. Um, I'm not banned from King Standard. No, no. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's just one of those. I, I plodded along for a very long time and, and dotted around, but I quite enjoyed the, the variation. Mm-hmm. So working in a gym at Coxmoors and then maybe that would be in the morning and then in the afternoon I'd come here and, and lifeguard. Mm-hmm. So that was it. I was a casual worker here for a couple of years, probably around 2013. And then there was a point where it closed was an issue with the roof at some point right. around that time and then I came back after finishing a degree I came back in 20, 
2020. I think I had the interview just where he was really unsure about what we were allowed to do with course, COVID. Yeah. Um, I think about a week after the interview for this role, lockdown happened. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, so had you got the role by that point? Yeah. Oh, right. Wow, yeah. that's such a unique position to be in. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was weird. So, yeah, that was a, an unusual mm. time. But I've, I've always had uh, an interest in Mesa Rabat, even as a, a casual worker. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like the history of the building and, and the regular customers that come in. And yeah, that's nice. Yeah, it's, it's a good vibe. Yeah, you can be a real sense of community, I feel. Yeah, they're all really great. That community vibe is mm. uh, at the forefront for sure. Everybody that comes in, so like for example, there's a Be Active Disabled session that we run. Oh, yeah. Everybody knows everybody. Mm. It's like cheers. And mm. they've all got each other's phone number and they'll let each other know if they're not coming or if they're going to be late. If they ask each other for lifts and things. Oh. It's, it's really great. Oh, it's so nice to see that. And I'll tell you a bit of history as well. So um, this is one of three public baths, a grade two listed buildings that are functional as well. And one of them is Pall Mall, which is privately owned. Another one is in Crystal Palace, which is opened in 1964. So I don't think it's on the same level mm-hmm. as here because this is 1907. This is real vintage. And um, combining public baths and libraries in a single site dates back to ancient Greece and mostly road baths is the only one left where both are functional in the whole world, I think. So that's very unique, I did not isn't know it? That. I know, it's good, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, I'll, I will I'll finish off on this because I want to ask you about your other practice. Well, the way that we first met was I bought some art off of you, but not your art, but you were telling me about your art when we met. Do you want to give a bit of an explanation about what you do with that and also if there's any link at all between your day job in lifeguarding and your collaging? Uh, Yeah, so I briefly mentioned it before, I finished a degree Mm. um, not that long ago actually because during uh, Covid I withdrew in the end. Right, I see. So I only graduated Mm. uh, last year, I think, from from Birmingham City University School of Art. And that was art and design I ended up doing. I did flutter between fine Mm -hmm. art and Mm -hmm. uh, graphic communication and then settled on art and design so it, it's it's not linked at all right, right. the the reason i started it initially was, was around 2014 maybe 2016 and the idea was i was going to be a teacher oh great okay and then after doing some volunteering in a school and just speaking to mm. friends who are teachers i realized i'm not a teacher yeah. i don't mind teaching things mm. but the, the the other things that go with it it's, it's not for me so I've ended up with a, a, a fine art degree. I'm a practicing visual artist, primarily collage, like mm-hmm. you said, so nine times out of 10, paper collage, yeah. but I also do video and sound. I've done a performance not too long ago, mm-hmm. which had collage elements mm-hmm. in that I think the, the overview of my work is that I don't really make anything from scratch. Right. So I, I get books from charity shops or uh, get the Metro off the mm-hmm. train, mm-hmm. cut them up and repurpose them. And I just have a few different interests. So I have a, a series of political collages. Mm-hmm. I have a series of uh, collages that relate to the climate emergency. Mm-hmm. And then other ones which are a bit abstract and serendipitous, mm-hmm. I would say. So I'll, I'll use scraps of other collages mm-hmm. that I've made to, to make something new. So go back to like not wasting anything. I try and use, you know, uh, an image for, for a collage very uh, purposefully. Yeah. And then with the scraps that I have of the page, I'll try and make something new out of those as well. So nothing goes to waste. That's great. It'd be like an old butcher. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, it, there's no direct mm-hmm. link, but if I'm not here working, I'm usually found cutting up a book, mm-hmm. usually, or uh, trying to find things on the internet that are relevant to my practice. And where can people follow and view and buy your art? My website is adamwin.online. So it's a d a m w y n n dot online. Uh, my Instagram handle is rip it up underscore start again. I'm on one of those two yeah. usually. That's so good though, because that makes a lot of sense about the rip it up and start again uh, and reusing and repurposing all your materials. I'm fascinated that you don't bin 
something that you've you know if you've cut out something you'll then repurpose the other stuff i think that's so mm. great oh well thanks so much it's been such a joy uh, talking to you i've loved have you enjoyed your bath yeah it's been really good and it's so still glad. really warm yeah is it let me have a little feel yeah it is isn't it wow yeah. so the baths here are very good insulators but yeah it's been absolutely lovely talking to you brilliant to hear about lifeguarding your art mostly red baths it's been a pleasure yeah, i will leave you. you to get out of the bath now <laughs> but thank you very much no thank you <laughs> That was wonderful to chat to Adam. I absolutely loved hearing about his lifeguarding and his collaging. And also, he had the smallest towel I've ever seen in my life. But now, to listen to a piece of music by Ayushi Jane. I take the newspaper and I choose the chance I take Make the future from what I can separate Forgive the past for trying to make my life opaque Know the memory's hard to look at straight See right through the shade, but see the blue mosaic shaking up its fate. Oh, I respect it. See the future break to a broken blue mosaic, and I collect.
To finish this episode, we'll be heading back to Ajay Sun for a guided meditation. For this guided meditation, I will invite you to close the eyes if this feels comfortable or if it feels more accessible, you can keep the eyes open and lower the gaze. In this moment, I would like you to think of someone or some cause that you would like to dedicate this practice to. Breathing in, I see myself as a river. Breathing out, I feel connection. In, river. Out, connection. You can continue in this way or you can simply notice the rising and the falling of the breath in the body. Sending out this practice like a river. Sending out compassion, sending out love. Breathing in, I see myself as a river. Breathing out, I feel connection. Thank you for listening to episode one of Bathcasts. Tune in next time for my interview with community organisers Malaika and Shazia. A bubbly bath bye-bye to you.